to Audio Cogs Workshop. Today I'm going to try and fix my plane thickness. So I've had this plane thickness for a few years now, but uh, I have to admit for probably half of that time it's not worked. I was thickness in a couple of boards one day when uh, it just started making some awful noises and stopped feeding the boards in and after that it's just not worked. So you can see I've partially taken the machine apart already. Uh, I just wanted to find out roughly what was wrong. I've taken off the outfeed table, the infeed table, the fence, the guards, um, and I've had the side open here and I've taken one of the gears out. Uh, basically I needed to strip it down just to find out roughly what was wrong with the machine, just to see if there was something jammed or, or what. Uh, but it looks like what's happened is the bearings have failed uh, in the infeed rollers and that has then shredded one of the other gears in the system. So uh, as you can see the outfeed roller, uh, that's fine. Um, the cutter block is rotating fine, but the infeed roller is just jammed tight. I can't turn that at all. I, I've, I've tried really hard. That is jammed tight. So I'm guessing there's bearings in here, and uh, one of them, are, you know, one of the wall bearings is shattered and just jammed the bearing or something like that. Um, I'll just take you over to see the other parts. So rather unfortunately, when the infeed roller jammed, it transferred all the torque of the motor down onto this plastic gear, and as you can see, it's completely shredded some of the teeth. Um, I've, I've spoken to somebody, I, I said why wasn't this made out of uh, you know, aluminium or steel or something and apparently this might be a, an actual sort of weak, a deliberate weak point in the system so if something does jam up it just shreds this gear uh, rather than you know, damaging something more important in the system but either way this gear is going to need replacing um, I have no way of making a gear so I'm going to have to try and uh, buy one of those but I've spoken to somebody at Axminster, which is where I bought this, and they said they should be able to source one of those. But before I buy that, I need to find out what's wrong with the cutter block. So, uh, although I took the infeed and outfeed tables and stuff off without any instructions, uh, I decided before I took the cutter block apart, I'd go and look up the parts diagram. Uh, it's not for this model, it's for the 310 model, this is the 260, and it's for the American version, but I think they're, they're pretty similar. I can't see any really obvious differences. Unfortunately, uh, as is often the case, these, the diagram is so tiny that I can barely see what's going on so I'm going to have to just sort of look at this and work it out from the diagram as I go along. Right, so this plate is seemingly held on just by this. And this, uh, this holds the dust shroud over. Oh my god, the thread's completely knackered. Some gorillas done that up. Right, so there's a nice big bearing in there. Uh, what is it? 6205Z. So you can see here, this is the infeed roller, and it looks like there isn't bearings. Um, it looks like the shaft of the infeed roller just sits inside this block. Um, there's a big old spring on there uh, that well, presumably that's so you provide some sort of even down pressure on the wood. I'm not inclined to take that out. I don't like springs. I'm, I nearly lost a couple of fingers to a spring, to a garage door spring. You don't want to mess with springs, they can have a lot of energy in them. Um, but if I can get this cutter block off now, then maybe I can get a bit of a closer look to see what's wrong. Unfortunately, I think I might end up having to take the spring out here, because uh, there doesn't appear to be any obvious reason why that isn't turning. I mean, there's not a lot to go wrong here. So I'm going to take that out and hope for the best. Well, spring didn't take my head off, that's good. So. Um, the idea here, of course, is that if I, if I can get just this roller out and see what's wrong, then uh, that's easier than taking the whole head, the whole cutter block and assembly apart. There's one of the springs. That is a strong spring. I can't compress that at all. Right then, now I would say if there's nothing wrong with the head, that should move up and down freely, which it does, and it should rotate freely, which it clearly doesn't. It's not even trying. No, 
because of course this won't come out. These blocks go through uh, these pieces of frame, and um, there's no way to get that shaft out without these these two parts of the frame being further apart. And the only way to get them further apart is to strip the whole thing down. Damn it! So I think we've still got tension on the belt there. So I think I'm going to next. I'll get the motor up, get that belt off. The chain is uh, free already, but yeah, obviously I'll take that off as well. So it looks like it should be fairly easy to get the belt off. Um, you can just slap them off these. And with any luck, I should be able to reach in here, lift the motor up without losing a finger, and just slide it across. Oh, except the motorway is now to the tongue. Right, so after a hell of a struggle, I finally managed to get the motor up. Um, basically, you have to reach in here, uh, under the motor, up as far up towards the, uh, this side as you can, and then lift the motor, both hands if you can, and just shove it back. If you don't get, it, if you don't get your hands right up this side, um, the motor jams as it, as it tries to come up, um, and you'll, just, you'll, you'll never lift it. But uh, I've locked it off here, so it doesn't fall on me and kill me. Uh, I've taken off the belt. God, bloody hell, that's tight. I mean, while I'm at this, you know, I'm, I'm taking this apart so much now, I might as well give it a good, a good strip down and a good clean. Right, so that, that does lift up, but as you can see, it uh, isn't coming through. So I'm just going to take the whole cutter block assembly off. So after considerable swearing I've managed to slacken off this nut which holds on this sprocket and I did it just by jamming a piece of wood in there just so it, basically uh, there's nothing to hold on to there's no flats on the shaft or anything um, so there's no way to put a spanner uh, the only thing that you've got to hold on to to stop the shaft from rotating is uh, this sprocket uh, now what I want to do is try and take I want to try and take this off, this bar off, because this bar holds the hood, uh, the chip collection hood. And if I can take that off, uh, then I can take this off, which would make life easier, and I can take the hood off. Um, so then the cutter block, I think, will just sit flat on the table. But there appears to be a grub screw up under there. How the bloody hell am I supposed to get to that? I think the whole, I think the cutter block assembly is going to have to come off first. Okay, so the uh, interlock got left behind. Right, so this now comes off here. Uh, I'm a bit concerned that this flat must mate up with something, uh, possibly one of the tables. Um, so I'm not quite sure why there's a flat there. It was about that sort of angle. Um, don't know, but uh, yeah, it's got a wash behind it. But of course, that hasn't freed the shaft because um, the shaft is slotted in between the two sides of the cutter block, or the cutter assembly. I don't know. Maybe it does come out. Let's see if I can't drive that through. So what I want to do is get this uh, shaft out because that is holding the dust cover on and that just makes the whole thing unwieldy. Uh, I tried tapping it this way uh, but that didn't work. Uh, I can see just down here there's uh, what looked like a grub screw but it actually is a roll pin. Turns out you can tap it this way out. It should come free then. It, the roll pin uh, locks into a little groove in the dust cover. There's a washer, so I changed my mind. 
The roll pin's coming out. Damn it. Disappeared in there somewhere. There you go, that was just, just tapped in. Um, now I can take that off. So the, uh, this uh, little pin has just come out, it's got a spring on it. Right, so we've got another spacer shaft here. So this one I think just provides uh, the, the correct width between these two frame parts. So that's going to come off now. A screw and a washer. I need to take a bit more apart before that will come apart. And it looks like I should be able to take off. The, these are kickback fingers. Um, and the idea is the wood pushes them in like this as it goes through and then when it hits the cutter if the cutter um, tries to throw it back out these will fly back and stab into the wood and stop it going back and they are wickedly sharp sharper than I expected because the force that that would push them back I wouldn't have thought they needed to be that sharp now what I don't want to have happen is for them to all fall off um, it's surprisingly nice, uh, surprisingly well built this. I picked it up second hand, a, a, guy, uh, a guy bought it and uh, found, I think it was, he didn't have enough space in his workshop. So he returned it to Axminster, but uh, it got a scuff along the front, uh, probably from unpacking it, um, just the, the what was it, the decal or the transfer on the front? Uh, yeah, he, he damaged it, so they sold it as a second. And that was all that was wrong with it. So, uh, and it, yeah, I, it gave me a, a, a year or so's good service before this happened. Yeah. So the frame, is, the frame is quite loose now, but I think it's been held in by the shaft of the cutter block. Oh, well, there's this bit. That's just sitting in a slot. So just down here, yeah, you can see uh, this is painted steel. That moves forwards and backwards. I think that's just to prevent chips from getting involved with the uh, feed roller. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to remove the circuit on one side to, to take the um, cutter block out. That's disappointing, because I can't see anything else that could be holding it together now. Right, uh, I'll find my circuit pliers. So I had another look on, uh, I had another look using the torch, um, so I could see a bit better, and uh, the bearing clearly is pushed in from this face. So taking the circuit out on this side wouldn't be any benefit. What it appears is there's a sort of sprung washer uh, with a circuit with a and another big flat washer that must be loading the bearing, holding it in, or something like that. Um, but either way, taking the circuit out, I don't think would be any benefit. So what that means, uh, certainly I couldn't take the, uh, the bearing out or anything like that. So what that means is the, uh, the shaft for the cutter head must be pushed in. So that would imply that you can just tap this side off. It looks like the bearing's coming out. That's a pity. And that's the cutter block for you. There we go. Right, so as you can see in here, we've got a flat washer and a sort of sprung washer. I'm sure the engineers in the crowd will know what that is. I'll slip that one in there. At long last, we can get the offending item out, and 
Yeah, that side is frozen solid. My God. Yeah, I don't know what's happened there, but that has welded itself together. There is no way that is rotating. This side, yeah, it's, it's not as loose as I'd like. This is the outfeed. Wow, wow, that's not good either. That's not sliding over there. I don't know if there's a, there doesn't appear to be a collar. Feels feels like it's galled up a bit. This side comes off easily. But yeah, again, it's filthy and dry as a bone. Nothing in there. Mm, yeah, pretty pretty graunchy feeling. I, I would say this one would fail next. So I just cleaned up uh, this you know, part of the mounting block, or whatever you call it. Um, just give it a bit of WD-40, a bit of dirty rag, and a little touch with some 600 grit just to get rid of uh, a tiny bit of surface rust that had formed. Um, it's been in storage in a slightly damp room for a couple of years, so uh, a tiny bit of surface rust had, had appeared. Um, th these aren't particularly precision surfaces it, it looks like it's uh, had a fly cutter over it or something like that or a you know a big shell mill or something there's you can see the milling marks um i'll, I'll just i'll hit these other sides uh, just a little bit uh, I, I won't touch in there because that looks like it's been cut uh, with some precision uh, and i'll just i'll go around and do all the other bits and i'll get back to you when I come to take apart the shaft that's broken and we can see if I can get that apart. So this is the outfeed, uh, the outfeed roller and um, this side came off quite easily. This side though is uh, stuck. Um, well it's not completely stuck. It, it, it does rotate. Uh, Right, hopefully you can see this, but just all around here, yeah, you can see that there is all galled up. Yep, just here, it's the metal's just basically just smeared. So I think that would be your problem right there. Let's see if I can't get the torch on that, maybe you can see better. So here's the bearing, let's call it bushing or, or something, uh, that I've managed to get off. Uh, it's the, the damaged one and as you can see in here, there's some really bad score marks. Um, some of them probably nearly half a millimetre deep, some really, really bad scores. I'm going to try and get the bearing off the feed roller end. Um, I can't see this working but you never know. That's thoroughly on there. Um, so that's on there for good. Um, yeah, where to go from here? Uh, I'm gonna talk to somebody I know about how you could fix this, about how, you know, is, would it be possible to fit that bush in, as I said. Um, I'm also gonna talk to Axminster or see if I can get hold of Jet directly and see how much the parts are. Um, I'm guessing these aren't small parts, uh, so I'm guessing probably in the couple of hundred quid range for the spares for this, which is a bit irritating. This end is totally galled up and completely and utterly there's the scores there are really really deep uh, and that <coughs> that's clearly why it's seized on. Up, up this end though it looks okay. It seems to be pretty good. Um, I, I've got I've got uh, one of these on order anyway so uh, I will replace it but it'd be interesting to see if I can fix that. There's, there's like a, a one mil lump there. 
so they're sticking up a bit in the mill. But yeah, that came off. Came off easier than I expected. Um, so I just scored through, and then I thought this is, you know, this is. So this this bit came off uh, as I expected it to. It, it's quite hard on the inside, uh, possibly case hardened. So I just slit down there and then split it with uh, with the screwdriver. And it's I don't know if you can see in there, but it's cracked. Nice straight, nice straight crack. So here's one of the old bushings. Uh, this one doesn't show any signs of galling. Uh, I'm just going to see how it fits on, on this now. Yeah, so there's a tiny there's a tiny bit of play in that. Um, this is I haven't touched this side. Is it? Yeah, there's a tiny bit of play there. There's definitely more play on this end now I've, I've repolished it, but yeah, that's tiny. I, I think that would probably work. And as you can see now, before it was stuck and now it rotates freely. So yeah, I, I would say that would work. Uh, I'm going to keep this. Uh, I'm going to keep this roller as uh, this infeed roller as a spare, I think, because you know it's it's pretty good apart from that. Uh, and I can't imagine I could ever sell it all. <laughs> But yeah, that, that's good. Excellent. So here are the two old infeed rollers. Um, yeah, I, now that I've managed to clean that up, uh, they're pretty good. Uh, certainly good enough to keep as spares. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is oil, oil up the uh, bearing surfaces, uh, wrap the things in cling film, and then stick them in storage. Um, I've always got spares in the future. I think uh, these, the bushings, I'm probably just... Uh, I'll probably just bin these because you know if Jet thinks this is what these being too hard is what caused the problem, so they're always going to be too hard. Um, there's nothing I can do about that, so I think probably they're better off just going in the bin. There we go. So in 40 years, when I'm dead, somebody can sort of find these and throw them away. <laughs>